All right, so in this video, I will show you how to build a featured collection slider for your homepage, uh, just like the one you would see right here. And it's also going to be mobile responsive, which means that we will have four slides at a time on desktop, and then one slide at a time on mobile phones like the iPhone. And on a tablet like the iPad, we would have two slides, which is kind of the intermediate between mobile and desktop. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Hey, Jan here, coding with Jan.com. So today, featured collection slideshow for our homepage, which is a task maybe worth 100 or 120 bucks. Uh, so it's basically the combination of these two. And that's pretty cool because it's similar to what we do inside free mode, where we solve over $1,000 worth of freelance tasks um, because then students can gain the confidence that what they have learned at a certain point is enough to start shooting for these small projects. And the only difference is that today we are not going to write all the code from scratch because it's actually quite a bit. And then we would need to learn how to set up a local development environment, uh, learn about HTML, CSS, Shopify sections, Shopify liquid. And that's a little too much for one single video. So instead I have this code file prepared and we're going to copy and paste certain snippets from here. But I'm still going to explain what each of these does so that you get a very good understanding how they all come together. And then you can do further research on each of the individual topics if you're interested. And if you're a merchant, on the other hand, you can just copy what I do. Or if you still need help with any of the other features on your store, you can check out some of the other links in the video description. And now we should dive in. All right, so today we're starting out on the Shopify backend. And as you can see, I'm in one of my development stores. That's where I test different features. And I have the debut theme in place with a bit of demo content, just a few images and a few products. And before working, it's always a good idea to create a duplicate of your live theme. So then it will instantiate a theme copy down below and you can use that as a backup. And if you're working on a live store, you actually want to work in that theme copy first. So then you can click on actions, edit code, and then preview all the changes before you publish the theme copy as a new live theme. Um, but as I'm working in a development store, I can work directly within the main theme. Uh, so I click on actions and then edit code. And the first file we want to bring up in here is called theme.liquid. You can find it in the layout folder. And then I will scroll all the way down to the bottom until we see the closing body tag. And here I want to paste the first two lines of our code file, which are these two right here. Let's copy these and paste them right here. And with these two lines, we are including a JavaScript library that is called Flickety. And that's one of the more popular slideshow libraries. So basically we don't have to reinvent the wheel here and can just make use of their pre-built functions. And here you can also read up on the documentation, like how everything works and how to get started, uh, how to use the library and what different options we would have. And then you could also read up on their licenses because for certain types of projects, the library is completely for free to use. Uh, and other types of projects require you to obtain a commercial license, which is $25 lifetime. But I can't give you any legal advice here, so you will have to decide whether your projects fall into one or the other category. Let's just leave it at that. And that's basically what these two lines do. Okay, so now don't forget to save this file and then we can close it. And the next thing I want to do is navigate to the sections folder of our theme. And in here, I want to add a new section file and we could just call that collection-slider.liquid. Actually, the name doesn't matter too much, um, but you could give it something meaningful. Let's create a section. So then I want to remove all the default code in here. And from our copy paste file, we can now go down to where it reads schema. And then you want to copy everything until we get to the end schema tag. So basically the end of that file. And then I will paste everything in here. And then we can save that file. And what the schema tag inside a section file does is it creates new customizer settings. So if you're working in a live theme, you would have to click this button. And if you're working in a theme copy, you would use this customizer. Uh, so let me show you that. So here we have all the elements that we previously had, like for example, this image with text element. So here we're basically telling Shopify that we want to create a new section that goes by the name collection slider. And by defining that presets tag down here, we're also telling the system that this section should be available on the front page. And here we define all the settings that we need, which are namely 
a text field for the headline, a collection picker to select the featured collection, and a range element, so basically a slider that lets us decide how many products the slideshow should contain. And all of these input elements also have a unique ID. So here we have product count, here we have collection, here we have title, so that we can later uniquely reference these elements and grab the data or the values that they hold. So here's how it looks on the front end. If I now click on add new section, we should be able to find our collection slider. It's right here. So let's add that new element. And here we can enter a headline, we can select the collection and select the amount of products to be displayed. Uh, so maybe we can just leave the heading as it is for now and select a collection. I have a homepage collection with maybe 20 products in it or something like that. And then we can bump up the numbers of products to display to 10 or 12 or whatever you want to have. And then we can already save that. But for now, we wouldn't see any output on the front end because we never used these values anywhere. So that's going to be the next thing to work on. Okay, so now that we have the data in place, so to speak, let's work on the markup to display that data. And therefore, I drop into a few new lines on top of our schema. And then I go back to our code file. And now we'll copy everything starting from this div here, like line 25, and all the way down to the last div, which is line 46 for me. And then I will just copy everything in here and paste it on top of our schema tag. Save that already. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that we find in here. So it all starts with a div element that acts as our most outer container and pretty much wraps everything. And div elements are just plain HTML. And then you would also see all these classes assigned to these elements. So these are CSS classes that we can later use to style these elements. And then we start to reference our new input elements. So here we check whether or not the title is empty. So that's the title from our schema based on that ID right here. And if it's not empty, we just want to put out a heading element that contains the title. And then down here, we grab the selected collection and the product limit that was selected. And that's where we start to render the actual slideshow. And that's when for every product in the collection, we render a new slide or carousel cell. And that contains a link to the product, the product image, the product title, and the product price. Easy as that. And the way that you can find out that this is the structure we have to follow is by reading up on Flickety's documentation. So basically here they say you have like one outer container, which is the, the main slideshow. And then for every new slide, you create these carousel cells with whatever content they may contain. And to initialize the slideshow, one of the elements needs to have a data attribute that just goes by the name data-flickety. So that's what we find right here. And then we have all the carousel cells with our content in between. Hope that makes sense. Okay, now if we save that file, we could already have a look at the front end. And this time I would recommend not using the customizer because sometimes JavaScript is displayed a little buggy here. So instead, I just want to preview the theme in the normal way. And then we can scroll down all the way to the bottom. So that is what our slideshow currently looks. And it might look a little different from what we would have expected. So we have these dots right here and the slides. Yeah, I, I don't even have words for these slides. Maybe we could just call them too small, uh, but definitely not the way we want them to be. And that's why we need to tweak the slideshow options and the styling. So back in our slideshow file, I will now add a few new lines on top. And then from our copy paste file, I will now grab the slideshow settings or configuration if you want. And then I will just paste it on top. So here you can see some of the available slideshow options. Like for example, here we disable the page dots. And it's not like I would remember these because you can just read up on them on the documentation. So here we see what kind of options are available and what data we have to put in. And this whole configuration is then stored in a new variable called Flickety Options uh, because that makes the code a bit cleaner because then you have all the configuration on top of the file. And the variable then goes into the slideshow itself. Yeah. So if we now save that and refresh the front end, it still doesn't look too good. But for example, the dots are now gone. So 
Now we can move on with styling the slideshow. So one last time, back in our collection slider file, uh, I navigate in between the last div element and the schema tag, few new break lines. And from our copy paste file, I'm now grabbing the style tags and everything in between. So it ends right here, copy and paste. So here we have all the CSS rules that make up the styling. And for example, here we are referencing the CSS class called Featured Collection Slider. And these are the rules that we want to apply then. And the corresponding element would be here, for example. It's the div that goes by the class name Featured Collection Slider. And further, we can also find the media queries, which help to make the whole thing responsive. So these CSS rules only apply if the screen size is less than 920. And these only apply if the screen size is less than 767 pixels. And that's pretty much it. So now we can save the file and check back on the front end. And there we have it, our good looking, fully functional, super smooth and responsive self-made slideshow. How cool is that? All right, jokes aside, I hope there was something in helpful. And if you're looking to become a freelancer, keep an eye on free mode. If you need help with your projects, check out my website. And, and what did you say? Hitting the like button to support the channel. And then I'll see you in the next.